Well, I decided not to go into teaching right away. I decided to go to grad school at Berkeley. But when I came to Berkeley, I also decided I wasn't going to live in Berkeley. I was going to be East Oakland. I used to take that 40 bus. Does the 40 bus still exist? It's called the one now. <laughs> Down Foothill, all the way to Berkeley. I used to think, you know, it was about a 30, 40 minute ride. It was like I was going through two different worlds. East Oakland to Berkeley. And I would do it every day. And I decided, well, to connect with the community, I would sub, be a substitute teacher. And I would do it for both because it could uh, help pay my bills. I was a grad school, but also a good way to get to know the place where I lived. And at first, it was a, a great experience for me because I was, although I was uh, assigned to middle schools typically because young men, they felt, could handle middle schools. Uh, and that meant that you had to uh, be able to, to be highly entertaining, right? because middle school kids uh, uh, had a lot of energy, and if you were a sub, they knew you wanted to be back the next day. They got a field day with you. But I figured, I learned quickly that if you came in with a plan and you could engage them, it could, it could, it could work. And so I found, okay, something was working for me. And uh, although I had this kind of schizophrenic existence where I'd be at Berkeley studying sociology, and, and I was, my focus was on the Caribbean and political change, but also doing work in East Oakland, it, I still liked it. I liked being grounded. I liked being connected to the place where I lived in this way. So they sent me out to Elmhurst Middle School. And I got a, I got a call that morning. She said, we're going to send you out to Elmhurst. And she said, um, and the dispatcher usually doesn't have a conversation. She said, I'm just going to warn you right now, it's a bad school. <laughs> I said, really? I said, why is so bad? She said, you'll see, but I'm just letting you know ahead of time. Bad school. I think, how bad could it be? So I go out there, so way out there, it's practically in San Diego, it's way, way out there, 98th Street. And, uh, and I'm the art teacher for the day. And I'm thinking, art, that, I know nothing about art, but how hard could that be, right? I'll draw, they'll draw, we'll all draw together. <laughs> making art. First period, it worked. We sat and drew, and I said, wow, this is a wonderful, I don't know why people think it's bad, the kids were even telling me it's bad. I don't say anything bad about this. We're drawing and having a wonderful time. That was first. Second period, I noticed I have a lot of people in my room. Way more than are on the roster. I say to the kids, I said, why do I have all these people in there? They said, well, they heard it's a cool sub in the art room. <laughs> so people are coming. I said, well, as long as we all draw, it's all good. Right? <laughs> but after a few minutes, it's clear that drawing becomes a lot less interesting than talking and throwing crayons, but it's more or less manageable. Third period, place is packed. <laughs> About 50, 60 people in the room. I, can, I have to shut the door to stop them from coming. I can't tell who belongs. No one's drawing. Crayons being thrown, chaos. I'm starting to get stressed out. At one point I hear a banging on the door, and the door has a glass window on it. The girl is banging on the door with her umbrella. Some of the glass about to break. I go to the door, I said, uh, young lady, what's your problem? She says, let me in that effing classroom. I said, young lady, you better go away. You can't come in here. She takes the umbrella and she hits me on the arm. I starts to laugh. I said, little girl, I'm a substitute teacher. After school, I'm not a teacher at all. <laughs> I find you after school, it's on today. Now I know I'm losing and I'm shaking. <laughs> and I put some kids and throw my crayons, but I get through third period. I get through third period. That's okay. Lunch time. Let me go get some lunch. We group. Go to the teacher's lounge. Worse than the classroom. Teacher's lounge. Everybody's complaining about how terrible the school is, how bad their jobs are, how much the, uh, the bad the kids are. So let me go back to the classroom. Go back to the classroom, and this is now a couple kids there. It's kind of long. I said, I said what's going on at this school? I said, it's, it's like this. We hate it too. Everybody hates this school. It's wild. It's out of control. I said, is it like this everywhere? It's not everywhere, but most of the school is like that. So the fifth period comes, and now it's like, I can't even, 75 people in there. I, it's just ridiculous. They're fighting. They're throwing things. I call the phone. I said, listen, I'm not staying. I'm going home. You don't have to pay me. You need to send someone down here take over this classroom. I have a bad headache, I gotta go home. So I said, okay, we're sending someone down. So I, I start to walk out the office, I run into the principal. I said, let me, I have to tell you something, you're the principal? She said, yes, I am. She said, this is the worst school I've ever been to. 
He said, I know. <laughs> I'm trying to get out of here myself. <laughs> I said, well, you know, this is really bad. I can't understand why it's so bad. She said, well, before you go, I want you to go down the hall and see Miss Brown's flesh. I said, it's not, it's not bad everywhere. I said, well, that's what the kids told me. I said, yeah, go see. I go down the hall, and I knock on the door, and I see a normal classroom. It's a man's classroom. Kids on desk. She's teaching. I even see some of the kids were throwing crayons early. Yeah, they are, they're working. <laughs> it's amazing. I say for the whole period. And the period, I said, well, Ms. Brown, what are you doing there? She says, what do you mean, what am I doing? She says, I'm teaching. I said, well, the kids here, they're on task, they're learning. I said, I said, this is not the rest of the school. It's all out of control. She said, I know. She said, but not here. I said, why not? She said, because the kids know I don't play. The kids know if they're here, they've got to work. If they act up, I don't even the office. But then nothing's going to happen there. They have to work. They have to stay with me. I said, well, whatever you're doing is working. And you need to help them. They need some help here. She said, that's the one thing I won't do. She said, I learned a long time ago the only way to survive here was to stay away from the adults. I will help the kids. I will stay late. I will tutor. But I don't go to faculty meetings. And I barely speak to any of the adults in school anymore. And as I left that day, I thought, how sad. How sad that the school had basically someone who knew had the answers to what it took to educate those kids right there in its midst, but did not know how to tap into that knowledge, that skill that was that was right there. And that is actually a metaphor for public education. Today.